presenting the CW Crew. Hey everybody, John Foss, CW Twin Cities. I'm hanging out with Talia Shire, Peter Garrity, and Robert Jury. We are talking about the new film, Working Man, which is gonna be right here in the Twin Cities at the Twin Cities Film Fest. Tell us about this film. Me? Wait, wait you're you. the creator. Okay, I'll the working man. Okay. The this is the working, working man right here. Yeah, I'll tell you, you about got him. Right. Uh, this film is about um, uh, a family that has and a town, and the family and the town have been have gone through some uh, heavy duty traumas, and the family has gone through a trauma, which we'll get to later, and this is my wife. I'm the working man. My name is Allery. I'm 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 just a good little woman, right? You are a really good little woman. I'm a good little woman and who has to go through this journey with you. Has to go through yes. this journey with me. Yes. And the journey, as far as the audience is concerned, what they first see is that um, their factory that the that has kept the town alive or this neighborhood alive. Um, there were, used to be a lot of factories, and it boiled down to one factory, and it had 500 workers in it, and then it had 100 workers in it, and then it had 50 workers in it, and now it's closed down. And it's yeah. a solid blow to the entire neighborhood. And all these working men and women and families are suddenly out of a means of support, Gosh. and it hits them like a ton of bricks. And there's one guy that's a newcomer to the neighborhood, but most of the neighborhood has been there all their life. So what are they going to do now? What are they going to do? They're going to pick up and go somewhere? They're going to go to Florida? They want, you know, this is their life. This town is their life. And so it's a heavy hit on all of them. And the story zone, zoom, am I talking too much? Oh, no, so no, no, this is, this is, per, it, really, it's, the, the, the story zooms in on this particular family, which is, Moi and my lovely br right. bride right. here, and there's an extra layer of right. trauma that seems to be happening in this family. Mm -hmm. That's a and, mystery. And we, it's a we mystery. Don't know we don't know is. what it is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it seems to be. I was likening it today to John when I was ta talking to John earlier. And it popped into my mind that it's kind of a little like, it makes me think a little like uh, Beckett's Waiting for Godot. Oh, uh, yeah. Because in a sense, with Waiting for Godot, you say, okay, um, nothing happens. In fact, that's a line mm -hmm. in Beckett's Waiting for Godot. Nothing happens. But at the end of Waiting for Godot, nothing has happened, but you have looked at one of the most profound pieces of art in the uh, in the in the in the theater you know cosmos this piece here we know something has happened we know the the factory is closed down so what are they going to do about it and it's but when that happens yeah. and it so it's when we say Beckett it, yes it's an existential piece because we're dealing with meaning people used to get up go to work they had a job, right. they had a structure. Now that all goes, but when that happens to us, it reveals that something in us closed down long ago. Closed down long ago. Long ago. And right. we, too, will have, because my husband in this piece, this is what's so fascinating, the factory's closed down, but Allery, my husband in this piece, gets up every single morning and goes to work. There is no work. But he keeps going to this is no work, and the whole town watches this. And this other gentleman, our Billy Brown, joins you in this, and you know what they do? They start up the factory. So in a way, that factory was killed prematurely. It died prematurely in this town, and you're going to deal with what died in our marriage that shouldn't have prematurely, too. Yeah. And that's part of... Those are well, like that parallel is. stories, uh, stories right. that are going on. And it's so we're going to refine, by starting up that factory, we start up our lives again in a new way. And it, But it is Beckett, you're right. I mean, it's got this interesting rhythm because of you. That walk you take every day to this non-existent job, you know, trying to say it exists. 
and the whole town marvels. I wonder if that gives you some. Absolutely. And speaking of, you guys talked about family. Yeah. And when you guys came together today, all three of you are talking like it's a reunion because more than just the film, you guys have become a family in real life as well. That and happens. Yeah, that, It happened. And you can see, yes. it probably doesn't always happen, but in it a happened. successful it film happened. like this, yeah. it seems yeah. like. And it happened here. Yeah. No, it happens a lot, but it, it, thank God it happened here because, because, because it is Beckett-esque, this mm -hmm. piece we were able to flow into it something of our own sensibilities mm -hmm. and love, mm -hmm. you know, to keep, because, it, cause, cause that could be a hard thing, mm -hmm. you know, to inhabit. Yeah. Cause in a way you could say, we, right, okay, okay, what's so keeping what? these people together? Right. What's the glue that keeps this family together? But we had, so, we as actors, as people, we had, I think, and our director is here, I think we had that kinship and we wanted to, and so we could explore it. Yeah, for and sure. And including Billy, who was just, God, God, magical. Speaking of Billy and Talia and Peter, yes. Robert, what was it like to have such a great cast for this film, and how did you pull that off? Well, first of all, it was a gift, mm -hmm. right, to have such skilled actors involved from the get-go. Um, and, and to pull it off, right? Uh, when you have a movie like this, where you only have 20 days of 20 production, days. Mm -hmm. that's, days. that's it. 20 we days. Got this done. You don't have a ton of rehearsal time. You really have to hit the ground running, and at least from a, my position as the writer director, mm -hmm. you just sort of look to the heavens and 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 hope that the people you're working with somehow can come together and create that family that you're hoping for, and in a, in really short order and. I think they did that in spades. And, and 21, 20 days. Tw tw yeah, Not 21. 21 20 days is three weeks. Mm -hmm. It was less have than it. three weeks. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And we got lucky on a, on a bunch of things. Like, for instance, the, what was his name? The man who uh, the, was the manager right. of the factory, factory that we shot in. Right. The man who was the... What was his name? His first name? Well... Uh, I don't know if we want to call him out specifically, but McRae Manufacturing in Norwich, Illinois. We actually where we used. Shot. But what was yeah. his first name, that guy? Brad. 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 And so here's a guy who's the manager of this factory. And it's a working factory. It's still working, right? Right. But he, there was a, a certain number of days that he had that he could give to over to us, and then we took over the factory. And we slept there, and the offices oh, were wow. our dressing rooms. Yeah. And, you guys slept yeah. inside the factory? Well, I mean... Uh, the uh, actors. Uh, the the actors, characters we did. did. Yeah. You know, they uh -huh. did, and we, but we dressed and changed there. We, I we didn't did, sleep we a lot. We weren't that hard on them that, I, that we I made didn't, them sleep in the yeah, yeah. I didn't sl sl sleep there very much. I, they couldn't catch me, because I was uh, trying to run these golf carts. Uh, there were these golf <laughs> carts all around, right. all around the place. But uh, the guy that managed the factory, Brad, he put so much effort into helping us. I mean, that could have taken three weeks could of, have been on itself. But he would start the machines for us, or show us how to do the machines, and then go over to the next one. I mean, he was like a, uh, he, was, he was just amazing, uh, a facilitator uh, that kept the time, kept it clicking right along. And one of the other things that I thought was a real benefit I'm an actor that's worked, I worked at a theater company, one of the theater company in Providence, Rhode Island, Trinity Rep, and they were one of the best theater companies in America. And then up came this upstart theater company out of, in Chicago called Steppenwolf. <laughs> and Steppenwolf kicked us off our perch as being the number one theater in America, and they became number one theater in America. And then for years, I would hear about Chicago actors mm -hmm. and how tough they were and how working class you know, sensibilities they had and how honest they were and the, the, the veracity of their portrayals and things. And I just, for, for decades, I wanted to go to Chicago, leave Trinity Rep in Providence and just go to Chicago and become a, a, a Chicago actor. And we had, as m the people that worked this. In, in the factory, the people that lived in the town, the neighbors, who were so pivotal, they were all these incredible Chicago actors. Mm -hmm. Everyone mm -hmm. except our three leads, or Chicago yeah. cast. Oh, wow. And one wonderful act, I mean, wonderful. wonderful. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. Real, truthful. Yeah. That's Good, great. really you know. solid. Mm -hmm. So that little, that little ensemble, that was a big deal. For yeah. You. yeah. You felt it. And yeah. then that gives us something mm -hmm. to jump off mm -hmm. on. 
to, you know? Mm -hmm. so, it was really wonderful. One of the yeah. things that Peter was telling me beforehand is that this is kind of an autobiography story that you, that you wrote. Tell us about how this story, how your life helped write the story. Uh, autobi autobiographical in the sense that I, I grew up uh, in southeast Iowa, uh, close to a lot of river and factory towns, so know quite a bit about that manufacturing lifestyle, shall we say. A lot of friends, a lot of family members um, grew up doing factory jobs, still do. So from the aspect of uh, the working life, blue collar, Midwestern, Rust Belt, uh, that that's, comes from experience, I suppose. Uh, and to the emotional side of the movie from, a, yeah. it, there's also a, I think a pretty strong theme of mental health and mental illness that uh, is revealed in the film. And um, that comes from more personal stories, uh, family stories that quite honestly, I don't know if you, if, if you as a filmmaker or a storyteller jump into that territory um, I don't know. I don't know how you would begin to tell those types of stories if you didn't have some sort of frame of reference, mm -hmm. uh, at least honestly. Uh, and so it was kind of a marriage of those two worlds that that seemed to um, kind of fulfill what both themes or stories were ultimately trying to yeah. tell. And again, when you have beautiful actors at your side, your, I mean, it was uh, truly a, a, a blessing. I, I got to stand back and watch these people work. Um, again, just a, a gift. I'm a first time filmmaker. Mm -hmm. um, just celebrated my first 50th birthday. I realize that's sort of long in the tooth to make your first movie, but I don't know that I could have asked for a better situation. And we're going to go back and do part two. Yeah. Right. If they'll have me, yeah. Open that absolutely. factory up. Well, that's why I grew the beard. Is that right? Oh, gosh. So that's that's right. Is there another story to be told that's in your mind that you have ready to I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like this is maybe a story that stands it's well, a it's stand complete. alone. Yeah. But, uh, any but he is going to write something that has roles. I, yes. I would yes. leap at the chance to work with these two again, absolutely. I got a question for you. What, what do you got? I got uh, always intrigued me, and I thought it was beautiful, but I never quite. Allery goes for walks That's every night. That's his character, night. Allery. Mike Allery, right. char character Allery, mm -hmm. goes for walks every night. And he's. Uh, it, it, it's, it's so interesting that he's such a creature of, of habit. Habit. So, I mean, you know, he's the kind of guy that would always put his toothbrush in the same place or something like that. And he gets, and at some point during the night, uh, after dinner, he gets up and he just leaves the house. And he goes for a walk. And the walk took us over, the walk, walk took me over this bridge that, it wasn't a railroad bridge. It was uh, a, no, it was for grain barges uh, on the Des Plaines River in Joliet. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was, and it just, the lighting was always That night, there's something, swell. Flick, yes, that, there was something beautiful. Storms. One time. Yeah. When you walked there, it was nighttime and this light happened. Yeah. Wow. And and the, it's yeah. this old bridge with these old mm. metal railings, and, mm -hmm. and then you, you would look down underneath, and there's the river going by underneath. And I don't know what it meant. It's like... People ask, you know, well, what does your poem mean? <laughs> or they ask an artist, you know, what does your painting mean? And it's always kind of a nonsense question because there's no way of really describing what it means. I don't know what I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means to Allery, and I'm not sure what it means to the film. All I know is that every night when I would walk over that bridge, I think we did it three or four times or something. We did. <clears throat> um, that I would find myself uh, almost welling up. You know, there was just something emotional about it. It was, the lighting was beautiful, the river. It's, it's, um, it's when you add real elements, tactile elements, mm -hmm. like 
water and fire and wind to something. It brings it into some kind of poetical and, and because reality. That, and because that did happen. That did happen. Those walks has a strange light. Yeah. That you, but, but the walk in and of itself is also a ritual because Allery is trying to ritualize something. That's the waiting for Godot part. He's trying to outwit something. But it is true that, that visually yeah. it was so beautiful. I, it, was, it just think, all worked. Yeah, I th it, at least for me, the... I forgot it was a question for that you. Was, no, but, yeah, well, uh, no, that worked. It, it's not only just part of the, his ritual and his nightly habit to, to sort of escape what otherwise is, is torturous to mm -hmm. him, his thoughts, but to me that bridge represented... Um, him not being able to cross over fully to the other side. He would always come back, right? He'd go to the edge, but have to come back again and again. And um, I, I think there's something a bit metaphorical there and oh. transformative that we see later on in the film, in the story. Um, and as far as that location, that's something I'll take a little bit of credit for because we, we were up against it. It was our last day of shooting. It was day 20 of our shoot. We went down to Juliet. We were only there one day. We had just one day to do all those exteriors, these beautiful, uh, in this beautiful factory town on these bridges. It was the only town that I found that sort of met that idea of what I had in my head of um, these, and they're great, enormous, beautiful drawbridges that would open mm -hmm. up and grain barges would come through. Mm. Nowhere else up and down that river had quite the same look and appeal, and storms were moving in. Uh, then, and I was being told, look, we should really stay in town in Chicago and shoot this on bridges we have here. And we rolled the dice. Uh, it was, that was, uh, and, and we ended up getting, you saw the film, some beautiful shots with heat lightning and storms mm -hmm. in the background. And that he's were really, walking that they were same supposed, line. Yeah, they were supposed to be raining. It was supposed to be raining on us at that very moment. Um, but, but it held off. We it just held off for day 20, yeah. and so we, we escaped and, and I think got some of the most... And by the way, our cinematographer, extraordinarily gifted... Yeah. Uh, Italian. Italian man, <laughs> Piero Basso. Piero Basso. Yes, he was, al dente. Uh, just, ex I think, extraordinary um, talent and, and so pleased with, with the work that he did on this movie and, yeah. and just And our composer, too, because, because yeah. the work is organic. We talked about the score right. David in our first conversation. Yeah. Boy, you had to have a, a score that wasn't a sound design, that was human and had humanity, and I think you got that. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, he was... Uh, he did a beautiful job, and again, in a short amount of time, right. David Gonzalez was a, a, he's a younger composer, but classically trained at the Berklee College of Music out of Boston. Boston. Excellent. Yep. My yeah. nephew went there. Yep. Uh, yep. So, uh, oh. A lineage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tim Hill. So, yeah, this, uh, a, a really, uh, going back to your original questions and, and statements about family, I, I think we found that with our actors, I think we found it with uh, you know the cinematographers, with my producing partners, Clark Peterson, Lovell Holder, oh, Maya Mel, right. beautiful people. Where's Maya? Is she not here? She's in Los Angeles. Oh, for God's sake! The they would wake us up in the. These are our producers. They wake <laughs> us up. They drive us there. I mean, we yeah. were all. Everybody was doing everything. It was. You, you do. Well, yeah, I definitely noticed that the cinematography was great. You guys took something that most people might think it, think it are ugly things, like the Rust Belt in general. You made it look beautiful, and the score was great too, because it was subtle, but it was always there, and it was always kind of adding to what was happening in the film. Some, Love that. Some of it, yeah, I'm sorry. Well, well I guess my next question, I guess, for you guys, this guy's a first-time director, and to have some, a film come out like this and be such a great piece of work, what is your feedback as far as working with this guy I, on a first time? Can you, can you believe it's his first film? I, I love first time directors. <laughs> Let me just say, I've worked with a few. Man, yeah, well, is it I don't know what that means. Things, I, I don't know first time, hundredth time. It is the time of working with an artist. It will be this way any time I work with you. Hopefully, I work with you again. It will always feel like the first time. I don't know. We have a good track record. Yeah. I mean, Rocky. Well, yes, and first that time was filmmaker. Fun. It was always, and, and that yeah. there's a lot of passion 
when that happens. But I, I know with Robert, who's also our writer, that's a very interesting uh, combination and, and uh, his particular passion for the piece and how we are and how you could see uh, mm -hmm. that we do love and respect each other. I would, I would bet that on the, his tenth time, if we work together, it would be the same feeling. Do you Same have anything to feeling. add to that, Peter? Well, sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was back thinking, I was back thinking, I never uh, contradict anything that I <coughs> No, you do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's wise. Yeah. See, you're living the no. husband life I'm, Austria. I'm oh, living the stop vida, it. La vida loca. Hey, <laughs> Marona. <laughs> Marona me. <laughs> So, okay, so I almost slipped into something. Oh, no, I know no, no. you did. No, no. Oh, no. no. All right, no. so let me ask you this. You yeah, guys, go ahead. You, you guys, <laughs> Talia, you mentioned this. What? Off camera. You said that you guys were catching up and that playing a husband wife in a film, it becomes an actual, like you, you said you love this guy. What's it That's like to I see I him said. again? And how does it tell but, us about that relationship? But what I'm saying there was, remember, this piece had built into it in our relationship, in our story, something tragic. But it's always good that the, the underside of that, or actually the underside of what they had was real love and hope. So we had to have it, we had to have both sides at all times. The potential of that disaster and the potential of great young love, which she does remember all the time. I couldn't have, I needed an acting partner. The, 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 the partner is yourself, is yourself. So I got that from Peter. So that intimacy was real. And even when our moments of frustration and, and really getting to the point where we would have to say, can we continue? Can we continue as a couple? All that had, had an urgency and an and a authenticity. And I think it came out of great affection. And so yes, to see you again after all this time, it, it does make my heart, you know? Me too. Because, you know, as you grow older, there are a lot of people along the way you lose. So you say, this, this, I, And this the older you friend. get, the more people you lose. You lose, and boy, you and want And like to, what yeah. you were saying is, like you were saying, I mean, and it's true for the characters. Yeah. How much time do we have left? What do we have how left? Much time, how, how much time do we have on this earth? To live. To live and to experience love. Yeah. To experience happiness, and how much time do you want to waste? You know, oh, God. I mean, do you have ten thousand hours? Do you have eight thousand hours? You know, what do you got? You don't know, because we've all had friends that have walked out a door and gotten hit by a bus, and that's something it. happened. They don't yeah. know. You don't know, and 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 you know. So it's really, and I and I also got to say, uh, give a kind of shout out if that's a appropriate praise for a person of my age, but um, to actors, to the whole subset of actors in this world, because actors are almost invariably, even in Waiting for Godot, in this, in almost any really good play or film, and they don't always make it, it doesn't always happen, but they've got to make the attempt to connect on a deep emotional level as fast as they possibly can. So when we arrive in Chicago and we're told, oh, how many months do we have to do this? And he says, 20 days. <laughs> yeah. we, we gotta come up with something. You right. gotta come up with something on the first day. Mm -hmm. You've got to open yourself And it's got to be just up. right, or the other days won't work from that first exactly. day. And that's what we would do. How do we set this marriage correctly from the first day? So everything else would And work. a marriage as, that's as long-lived, li yes. long-lived, uh, yes. as this Both one is, <laughs> you know, I mean, we had at one point deep, we have, ha we have now and, and have had for many years a very deep passion towards one another. So there's a, uh, if I remember correctly, there's a, a scene in, um, in this movie where you are meeting with a friend, a, a girlfriend, uh, oh, and yeah. you're talking about, and, and she's reminiscing about the times that she used to dance, that they used to dance together. He used together. to take me dancing. Yeah. yeah. And, and how light on it is. And she says, you, you wouldn't know it now to look at him. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Wouldn't uh, know now to no, look at no. him, but he was light on his feet. 
Yeah. He was so light on his feet, and he knew what the Charleston, the, the yeah, yeah, the, yes, and you, you know, were he knew all these. Yeah. His grandmother, yes, his grandmother, grandmother taught you. Grandmother told him, taught him the Lindy or the <laughs> whatever those dances were, and he was light on his feet, and it was beautiful. And you ended that scene saying something like, "It, it was, was so beautiful. beautiful. It was yeah. so, it was so full of stuff." Well, yeah. they've still well, got that. Mm -hmm. They lived that. Mm -hmm. It's present in their DNA, in their, in their, in their souls. And they're fighting to hold you know? on to that. And they're fighting they to hold on. They may not know that, but they, they are. They don't even know where it is. Yeah. Where is it? Where did I lose it? Where did I misplace it? Because there's so many other, so much other crap that's. They have to live through that. Most people have to live through. Yeah. But we're fighting to. Uh, we find that and respect that. Where do you think the relationship goes after the movie? Oh, oh. We, uh, we have more children. Yeah. <laughs> no. You start but... dancing more. Go well, yeah, we do, actually. We, we do yeah. go dancing. We travel. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. I wasn't, I wasn't exactly yeah. light on my feet. No, that, yeah. but, you, but actually, we wind this piece up with great dancing. But Peter designed it. And he, well, you did. You choreographed it. You said, now turn here, and I turn here. <laughs> I, I, you, I was doing what you told me because I can't follow so hard. Well, you yeah. say, and in, in, you say in the in the script that mm. you say that I can't follow so hard. Oh, but I can't follow. <laughs> but he would throw me around and turn. It was wonderful. Yeah, yeah but Talia does have, as far as dancing <laughs> yeah, is concerned, that. Talia does I have get a. Um, an innate ability on the dance floor to basically hold me up and keep me from falling <laughs> <laughs> while <laughs> I am choreographing. Yeah, and turn this way, yes. and turn yes. that yes. way. I'm choreographing, it, sure. He's, turn this way, turn that way, turn the other way. Now you Italia, turn meanwhile, as she's spinning, right. is holding me right. up because I'm... Right. In day, I'll, I'll fall. That's part of the excitement of our mm -hmm. tango, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. The Blu-ray, anyway, yeah. extended, extended, extended. Right. But that actually right. was happening because well, right. you were saying, "Now we do, now we break, now we do," and then I right. yeah, got a whole right. And how we can keep from bumping into the young kids folks and, that are dancing yeah. next yeah. to us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're actually doing really well. And let me ask you about yeah. the the at the end of the day when people see this film, you you kind of touch on the importance of working and what that means to people. And um, and obviously losing the grief of losing somebody and also mental health. What are you hoping is the impact of this film for people that see it? Boy, that's a tough question. Uh, good question. Mm. Um, you know, I I think more than anything, you just hope that it resonates with with folks. On it, what's interesting to me is it, we've done a number of festivals now, film festivals across the country. I think somewhere nearing 15 to 20 at this really? point. Yeah, wow. it's been a number. Um, and mm. from folks in the audience that I get to visit with afterwards, it seems as though uh, people gravitate to either that, that story of the working life and what that means, the importance of work, or they gravitate to the, the, the <laughs> issues of mental health or mental illness. Sometimes it... it marries and comes together um, where you have unique people and situations that sort of identify with, with both. But um, yeah, I think ultimately as, as a storyteller, as a filmmaker, you you just really want people to, to feel like it was a worthwhile use of their time coming in and hearing your story mm -hmm. and that in somehow um, they can relate to it. Um, and that it feels real, that it doesn't feel manufactured in the, the poor sense, mm -hmm. not the industrial sense. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I couldn't be more thrilled with the results. Uh, what I've seen, the reactions, the, the reactions to their performances, I get, I, I get to take all the compliments at these festivals for their good work. And, um, well, let us have a few of them for that. <laughs> oh, how no. about tomorrow? That sounds good. But, you know, we're Twin sitting Cities in this. Festival. Is this sort of your, the Hollywood film room? Yeah, well, the whole I, bar. I always bring this up because I think it's important. I, I had a little bit in my life, uh, professional life, could a little bit of the experience of when 
all of those movie studios in Hollywood were working. What it was like, and you'd see other people, you'd get up at four or five in the morning, everybody was going. Well, that ended, because that was those were factories. They were extraordinary mm. factories where great things were done. And, you know, there was a horticulturist over here who made who knew every single thing about the forest in 18th century something, or a hairdresser who knows about the square bun or the car. It was very, very exciting. Mm -hmm. And on those, in those factories, there would be an art class for production designers and acting. I mean, it was, and it, and musicians had great jobs in those great rooms that would vibrate. Well, it, it closed down. And there is a loss and there is a stupor. People don't know where to meet. Do they meet at a delicatessen? Yes, they do. On Wednesdays, the writers go there. But, it, but, but we need a job, and we need a place to have that job, and we need our community. So you feel like you can relate to the people, to the, to the people in this film? Without, we need to get up and go to work and have a job and have meaning. But these are changing, they're evolving, so we need the education to say, you know what, we're willing to learn new things. Definitely. That's, 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 we're at, all of us at this moment in time, or that time of transition, and because and, things are closing down. But new things can be made. And Tali, yeah. we talked about this too at the beginning. You, you yeah. kind of mentioned this earlier, um, and we talked about this a little bit, but you are kind of the poster child of working on a film that was an independent film that became such a yes. big success. Yes. Rocky, first time filmmaker. Loved it. And then this is kind of the same thing, where yes. this guy's first time filmmaker, and you can feel the, Loved the emotion, it. and like this is a personal, something that somebody's personally passionate about. It's yes. not just another film no, along no. their list. And, Does and, it feel similar? Yes, because you know, we were making it in circumstances, if, we're, if, if it was our house that you would see, the audience sees, but in that very house were actors downstairs, and sound people downstairs, and makeup people, and all these little rooms stashed, right, working. That's what Rocky was like. There were all these actors and all these, nobody had any money. And it was the most exciting time and you loved all these other people and you respected them because you knew they didn't have, you know, nobody was getting a lot, right? I brought my own apple box because I'm small. So anyway, but it was an exciting time. I felt that same thing because I love the collaboration. You know, I love it when I'm acting and I love what goes on with all those wonderful people who came to work every single day on a frisky dollar. You know, I love that. Yeah. So this film is obviously playing here at the Twin Cities Film Fest. Where else can people around the country, around the world, see this film? Next stop, uh, we'll be down, happy to announce we, we were selected for this the SCAD Savannah Film Festival. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah which is... Savannah Car College of Art. That's become That's a big right. uh, film it school. It has, it has, and it's also uh, it now uh, similar here in the Midwest. You you attract a lot of filmmaking uh, Hollywood folks to come to your festival. They do the same thing in Savannah. We'll be there. Uh, St. Louis. Talia just came from Buffalo. Buffalo. Um, right. Because of the Shire family right. come from Buffalo. So I, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Fort Lauderdale, and, and actually now this past week, uh, we have a film sales agent on board who will start marketing the movie out to distributors. Uh, he's out of New York City. We're really excited about him. I think he's excited about us. But how little movies find a life, yeah. how independent. God, we need our independent movies. We need to put them together, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so. Because they they got a lot of soul and a lot of talent. So now then the festivals allow us to take it around and it starts to have a life and a following and where's the best place running. to to follow the film to find out in the future where workingmanmovie.com oh great yep we've got a nice little website set up it, it lists our upcoming screenings um including here in the twin cities uh availability of tickets how you can just magically click on and cool. and tickets to the show, find out where it's going to be, read about the actors, read about the process, um, see some fun stuff on there. So it's, you know, it's, uh, it's just magic of... Yeah, technology. Magic of technology, that's right, right helping us There's out a, a little bit. There's a trailer out somewhere, isn't there? We've got, we've got a yes. clip, and uh, yeah, that you can watch on, on, our, on our website as well. It features both of these two wonderful actors and Billy Brown as well. Um, so get a little bit of taste of the film. And yeah. one, one last question for you because you are a director, so obviously you're a, you're a film buff, I'm guessing, mm. throughout the years. 
and you got, and you hired these guys, so you obviously love their work. What's your personal favorite work that each of these two, besides Working Man, that they've done in their career? Well, okay, that's. I know there's I, their, their resume is so long. Yeah, yeah, I've seen a lot of their films, right? Um, so, you know, I I was a fan watching Peter in the Wire. Of course, he did beautiful work in that. But I mean, it's again, you're talking about a laundry list and a right. career that spans. 60 years. A few decades. A few decades. I think I've really around. just touched, yeah. you know, for the both of them. And, you know, I grew up an enormous fan of Rocky. Right. Crazy fan of Rocky. It's, it maybe is one of the movies that made me want to become a filmmaker. Maybe you felt like you could pull this off because of that story. Yeah, I mean, maybe. It's, bec it's such an underdog story. Mm -hmm. it, it's, I think if you've ever come from a place... I grew up on a farm and in Iowa, if you ever come from a place or a background where you're... The underdog. Well, you just feel like the, the possibility of making a movie is a billion miles away. I mean, it might as well be on the moon. And oh. when you have, when you see art like that, when you see stories like that, when you see actors like this doing their thing, um, it's, it makes it feel possible. Um, it's the power of story and the power of the movies, honestly. Power of film. Yeah. It's enormous, enormous inspiration. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a line in, the, in, this, in this film uh, that's spoken by one of those wonderful Chicago actors. Uh, I forget the actor's name. The character's name was Benny. Mm -hmm. He's out on the porch. Yeah. Right. Benny on the porch. Yeah. yeah. And, and when he decides to follow Walter oh. to mm -hmm. kind of get the other people around to, to go and participate in this insane venture in the factory. And he says, we all need a job. We, everyone needs a job. To, a job to feed their families. But we, what we really need is to work because working gives you meaning gives meaning to your life. The job is necessary to feed your family, but I need to go, I need to work. And I, that could be a, that could be written on a, a sash for any actor. Absolutely. You know, and, well, uh, and need a, need director to get and writer, up. any yeah. artist really. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and the other thing I love about this, um, uh, this has nothing to do with anything, but I, I love the notion of film and theater as being a, 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 a group art form. It's a, it's, a, it's a communal art form. So everybody, like Talia was just saying, everybody, you know, those rooms full of oh, makeup people I loved it. and, I loved and them. sound yeah. people and people, greens people and people creating props and, and just a, it's a group art form. And if you don't have, you know, if, if some department can't make it that day, you fall apart. You need everybody. Everybody needs anybody, everybody. So when you have the occasional jerk that behaves as if they're, you know, uh, God or something like that, and they're bigger than other people, you just say, that's, that's an aberration. Most people that work on film in all capacities view other people, view everyone else as being immensely valuable mm -hmm. because it's a group art form. Because we, and, and we come to love and, and love each other. So when those factories in Hollywood closed down, boy, it broke my heart. Yeah. Broke my heart. But we do, we have to get up, we gotta get a job, we have to work. Yeah. But to work together to make this thing, what we did, that's, a, that's, a, that's an honor. Very cool. Yeah. Right. Well, Talia, Peter. Good handshake. Yeah. Robert, thank you guys so much. Thank you. And Twin Cities, make sure you check out Working Man. Make, you, can watch, you can check it out online right now. You can find out how you can watch it. It may be coming to a city near you. Otherwise, stay tuned because I'm sure it will be available to everybody coming very soon. The CW crew on the CW Twin Cities, DJ Bonix, Alexa Score, and John Foss. Like, follow, subscribe to, and love the CW crew.